Questions are. It was the most awesome for me. That was the most awesome revelation. You know, so in my mind, you know the way I look at it, because God wants us to feed, and there's so much word going on. But when you are sitting in church, you don't have that opportunity. So church is like a party. You know how when you go to party, church gives you party food, smoke jollof rice. You just eat, eat, eat. Whether whether you're allergic or whether you're doesn't matter. You know, so you just eat. But when you're at home, you're eating home cooked food from somebody who knows you. Who's that you? You don't like too much oil. You, these vegetables will run your tummy. You, you know, and those are the kind of meetings that we need now. You see, I've learned that those meetings don't need to be large meetings. We've attended too many large meetings and come out of those large meetings. Yeah, nothing. Really, we, we, we are excited. It's like, that's why I say it's like, it's like party food. See, if you keep party food and you don't get an opportunity to eat proper meals at home, you'll become obese, you'll become unhealthy, you probably fall sick. And that's why when I talk to a lot of people these days, guess what they're saying? I'm very tired of church. I'm very tired of church because you can only eat it so much. So we must learn to create a balance. We're not saying the party food is bad. We're saying the party food cannot be the only food. You must find small fellowships where somebody is teaching and you are asking. And you must also find small fellowships where you are teaching. There's power in repetition. When my children are doing exams, I tell them, go over the same exam paper a hundred times and then teach it. When you teach a thing, it sits in you. So you must also not just sit in meetings where, you know, you are being taught, but find meetings where you are teaching. So when you feel hearing the word, go and find a group and say, come, let me tell you what I heard today. Teach it to them. We must do that. God is speaking very directly, very consistently in this season. And the message is the same everywhere. What is God saying? He's looking for hearts. Yeah. Not looking for the activity. He's not looking for big church. Oh, my church, I have 10 million. No. Out of the 10 million you have, how many people are seeking me with their hearts? And that is the heart cry of heaven. And God says that when you seek me, you will find me. When you seek me with what? All oh, your oh, heart. That is the heart cry of heaven. Guess what? It seems so easy seek God. But the minute you make up your mind to say, I will seek God, you find that it then becomes the most difficult thing to do. If you were praying for hours before, you wouldn't be able to pray anymore. All sorts of distractions will come your way. And so we must band together as people of God and develop strategies that will draw us, draw us into the place of heaven. This entire summer, God kept speaking to me about citizens of heaven. And I kept saying, oh, I'm going to write it down because it was just amazing. And the message was just so I said, I'll write it. I never did write it down until I got Linda's email that said, come and talk about my destiny, my life. I'm like, oh, God, why are you doing this to me? I should have written that message down because this is what God is saying. God is saying to you, you are a citizen of heaven, but we don't know. We don't know. And we're here struggling in the earth as if, this is our home. It is not. So imagine that, you know, Buhari is changing, you know, appointments, and then he appoints Pastor Emeka. Uh -uh. Yeah, we even had the country. What if I said South Africa? <laughs> so he appoints him an ambassador to the United States of America. He gets into America. Who is paying for his house? Who is paying his salary? 
Who is paying for his meals? Who is paying his staff? Who is paying his children's school fees? And they've given him a mission. Go to America and represent Nigeria. Then he gets to America. And he hears everybody's just speaking, you know. And he decides, no, I want to be an American. I don't want to be a Nigerian. Ah, now that I've entered, I will decamp. I'm going to be an American. Then he struggles, applies for citizenship, da, 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 and he gets it. So he becomes an American. Who will pay for his house? What did you say? He has to hustle. Thank you. Who will pay for his children? He has to hustle. So are you now understanding what's happening to us? We're citizens of heaven. But we've come here and, you know, we have decamped. God sent you with an assignment. Go into the earth. Do this for me. You come here and you're seeing Debanj. He's rapping. And, you know, he's on Twitter. He has one million followers. You have ten. You are seeing um, who else? Someone else. He's running his business. He has millions in his account. You are wondering. No. This grass is not green everywhere. One side seems green. A better decamp to the greener side. Then you abandon your assignment. You have a mission. Your destiny. You are a citizen of heaven. You don't belong to the earth. When Pastor America goes to America as an ambassador, he's not an American. The slang is not his language. He came with a language. He came with a culture. He's supposed to then permeate his environment with his language, his culture, his values, his beliefs. But we don't. We decamp. And then when we decamp, we then start to what? Also, you must struggle. You must struggle. You have to. Because you've abandoned what? The mission. That's why we're struggling with our destiny. That's why we're struggling. The Lord said to me, you wake up today, this morning you want to be a minister. The next morning you want to be a business person. The next day you want to be a tailor. After that, you want to be, have you asked me what your mission is? Have you asked? Because in your mind, what you are seeing in America is better than what you saw in heaven, in Nigeria, when they sent you. What you are seeing in America is better. That's how we are. What we are seeing in the worldly system is better than what we are seeing in heaven. Unfortunately, some of us have not even seen what's in heaven. So that's another problem. It's a totally different problem. Don't know where you're from. You know there are some people who don't know where they're from. Where are you from? Um, you know, my father said we are from, before they divided Delta, it used to be Bendel. We were, where? There's one, you don't know. So that's a different problem. I will not address that problem today. the struggle. That's why things are hard. I was still battling with this message and then I was listening to Apostle Joshua Selma. He said something in Ephesians 3.20. Somebody read that scripture. Ephesians. I was still battling with my lack of lack of commitment. Somebody read Ephesians 3.20. So when he sends you with a mission, he encases you in a body so that your body can, you know, interact. People can see you, they can touch you, they can hear you, they can speak to you, you can speak, you can communicate. But you are essentially who? The spirit. So how do you then come to the earth and forget who you are? You need to see the way some of us pay attention to the body. It's as if there is no spirit. If you want to 
check it there. Start timing yourself. Do that experiment. From when you wake up, you have a bath, brush your teeth. You know, how much time do you spend on makeup, on what you wear, how you choose what you wear, you know, da -da -da -da. so much time. Then compare that time with how much time you spend dressing up your spirit or feeding your spirit. How much time do you spend eating? If I was telling a friend of mine two days ago, I said, I, I need deliverance. From when I woke up in the morning till 9 p.m., I've been eating. You just have plantain chips. Finish that one. Then have tea. Finish that one. Then rice. Then from morning till 8 p.m., I told her, I said, I've been eating nonstop. Do you know that if your spirit man enters into the world, from morning mm. till 8 p.m. Oh, you can't do this. Mm. The same way my hips are not the same. <laughs> they are not it's from all the eating. They are not. If your spirit man sat down one full day to eat, you, you can't know, it's not possible. Now, your, your spirit man is encased in this body. But your spirit and this body are constantly at war. You don't get at war. So there is an interface. God brings a channel by which your spirit can communicate with your body. It's called what? Soul. Your soul. Your soul. <coughs> and that's why when they meet you, they say, oh, this guy is handsome or he's badly behaved. They encounter what? Your soul. Oh, they need, oh, what a very pretty girl. They say, oh, she's beautiful inside and out. What did you encounter? The soul. It's the soul of man that can be angry, not the body. The body will react because the soul is. Do you understand? God is a vessel. God is a vessel. It's the body that will slap somebody. That body will slap somebody. Why? Because the soul is already angry. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Do you understand? So the body, the body will pretty much do whatever the soul asks. Because that soul is a channel for expression of the spirit. Why can't the spirit express itself? I'm asking you. It's weak. It's weak. That's why Paul said, the things that I desire to do, I can't do them. He said, who will deliver me from this body of sin and death? Your body is strong. We're weak. Because this man, the man who is you, is not being fed. So you'll be taken over by the aliens that were asked to help you to fit into this kingdom and function here. Joshua, someone was preaching. He said, there are two prayer warriors inside of you. Hmm? Yes. yes? The warrior who asks and the warrior who does what? Thank you. Yes. So God is able to do exceedingly what you ask or think. And this is where the problem starts. I'm asking, but what I'm thinking is completely different. Completely different from what I'm thinking. So there is no unity. The Bible says, God, unite my heart. Yeah, your name. There is no unity. I love you, Lord, and I live. In fact, these are the principles. Somebody was preaching about this. You know what? I got you to that was from social media. Yeah. 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 I've done it. Yeah. And I lift my hands to worship you. Hey, Jesus. Yes, yeah, just a prayer point. Oh, my soul, rejoice. Ah, no, 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 no. This is not what I said. 
flesh. Okay, let me come. God is waiting for you. Yeah. You won't even do that with me. No. Do you understand? No. Me, me, I do. You won't do it. Not to talk of God. If you were talking to me, then I'll be on your phone ahead. Sister, what saying? You won't do it with me. And yet, we expect that our spirit will get to a point where there is unity. Do you understand? So that what we're asking, what's coming out of your mouth, right? What is in your soul realm will do what? What happened? That's why we make confessions. The Bible says, if you sit on this mountain, move. Go into the sea. It will move. Is God a liar? No. How many mountains have you commanded <laughs> that have moved? We have made confessions of TV sweat. Oh God, I'm believing you for a visa. I confess it. When I die, favor, favor, favor. Father, just go. Favor, 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 favor. Just go before the visa officer. They call your name. Visa. Spam. No. Oh God. I was confessing the favor. Your asking and your thinking must do what? Allies. They must align. Otherwise, guess what? You are wasting time. Don't waste. See, the minute I got this revelation, I stopped expending energy. energy. You know how you just be confessing things? Mm -hmm. Confessing things. Anything that your thinking has not grasped, mm -hmm. you are wasting your time. Yes. Don't mm -hmm. bother. That's why it says if you believe it in your heart and you say it, it will happen. You don't need to say it two, three, four times. You don't. Believe it. Grasp it. And then say it or it will happen. That's where we're going. <laughs> because me too, I was asking all the questions. That please God, how do I, because I've suffered. I've suffered many things. And I ought not to suffer these things. So first of all, you must retrace your steps. Hmm? Retrace your steps because your thinking will not align until you get back to what? Your kingdom. You are struggling because you are not of the earth. There will be no alignment. Until you get back to who you are, first understand I'm a what? Spirit. I'm a citizen of what? Heaven. Heaven. So where do you get your instructions from? Yes. What represents that? The Bible. I know. It Jesus. Jesus. Yes. What gives you instruction for daily living is the Bible. If Pastor Emeka goes to America, they will give him a list. All Nigerian citizens in America must do this, must do that. He cannot begin to struggle with it. He cannot say, no, 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 we will do one, we will not do two, we will do three. No! Retreat, call yourself back to order. First of all, we have gone at war. So we need to come back. And the citizen of what? Heaven. Where does the instruction come from? Heaven. You know, before I had this revelation, if you call me and you say, Oh, I have this issue, you have to help me pray. Before you have finished talking, I have started. <laughs> like a bullet. You know, you are just shooting back. Yeah. Oh, fire. Holy Ghost. I don't do that anymore. You know what? Because I'm just asking. I'm just asking. So, someone called me and said, oh, we have to pray about I said, I need a word from God. Because if God gives me a word concerning this thing, and I believe it, mm. I don't need to struggle in place of prayer. Mm. You know, there's some prayers God answers it. He answers it because the angels in heaven are like God. Just, just, just drop this. Just, just, just do 
too much. <laughs> this person eh, we have bottled all the tears. We think the tears we need to go and get more pebbles. But we don't need to go through that route. You don't. Retrace your steps. It brings us to the scripture. about anything that you have conviction about. Nobody can take it away from you. Nobody. If you have conviction in your heart that God heals all kinds of diseases, if you have that conviction, the day you see a sick person and lay hands and say, be healed, that person will be healed. You don't need to shout fast. No. You don't. Fasting is for you to get there. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Fasting is for you. Is when we say retrace your step. Fasting is part of that. You know, yes. let me retreat and get back into a place where I can hear. Yeah. And to be honest, it's not everyone in the Bible God gives you conviction about. Mm. Who gives you conviction? One day you just get a conviction about something. Nobody can shake you. Let me tell you a conviction I have. I have this conviction that the favor of God is upon my life. Nobody can tell me otherwise. And I've seen it happen. You know, I just know that if I enter into a situation that God will favor me, they're only going to give something to one person and the one they need. And it happens. It happens in very simple Every day, my boss said to me, she said, oh, I will never buy a business class ticket anymore. You know why? I get to the airport, we were paying me. And all of us will be standing there. The minute I give them my boarding pass, we've been upgraded. Okay, thank you. Just down, like that. <laughs> I've ne I told somebody, I said, I have never in my life been interviewed for a visa. And I've gone to many countries. Say it's not possible. I've never been. Say how? When the first time I went to the American embassy, they were calling people for interview, calling, calling. I sat down. They then called me. I got up. I said, approved. Come back in the afternoon. Not one question. It happens in all other embassies. I have never been. I have never prayed about it. That's what a conviction is. Nothing change, nothing shakes it for you. No, but I know I have it. I know I have it. I see it all the time. So when you have a conviction, and then you join it with a confession, there's something else. You are completely something else. Unfortunately, we know how to confess. Yes. We know how to confess. Yes. We even confess the scripture and nothing is happening. There shall not evil before me. Neither shall any plague come on my head. The plague is falling on top of your head. You know the scripture you are quoting. Why? not united your asking and your thinking. Your body, your soul, and your spirit are at work. Why? You have abandoned your children. You hustle, you struggle, you go back to your mission. Let's go to Jacob and see what happens to Jacob. Genesis. Thank you. 
scriptures, and I'll tell you what I found out. Now, Genesis 32 is talking about, you know, Jacob had then left his father in law and was going back, and how he saw heaven, and how he encountered you know, angels coming up and down, and he said, Oh my goodness, this is the house of God. Then he heard his brother he saw was coming, then he panicked, and then arranged his family, you go in front, you go in front, you know, go and give him gifts, sort of trying to pacify his brother. I want to read from verse 22, so do a bit of reading. I'm reading from the NLT. It says, during the night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two servants' wives, and his eleven sons, and he crossed the Jabok River with them. And taking them to the other side, he sent over all his possessions. This left Jacob all alone in the town. You must come to that place. Shut him down. What are you doing on Twitter? Am I saying don't tweet? Tweet, please. But by no means should Twitter become the voice you are listening to. Come to that place where you are all alone. Trace your steps. Let's go back to who we are. He was all alone in the camp, and the man came and rescued him until he don't be that to him. That's what's wrong. That rest thing that just brings you down to your knees. You need to be all alone. Take a retreat, three days, stay on your own. Switch off your phone. Nothing will happen. Nothing on earth will happen that God doesn't know about. Call the fight in South Africa. How many people have become disabled? Meanwhile, we've watched one million videos. They said xenophobia and xenophobia of the car will laugh. You know, we've, we've contributed to the discussion. And when you hear Nigerians contributing to a discussion, you think they were there. Hmm. It's a competition on who has more information. Hmm. Were you there? No, what started it is that, no, you don't even know. I have, you know, evidence that what, you know, and then you just spend so much time Talking about things that you can do nothing about. Hmm. It was all alone. The man came and wrestled with me. Why are we not hearing God? We're not alone. And I'm not talking about, remember you are not a body. Some of you say, oh, I'm not alone in the house. No, you are not. You are not a body. Your body is alone, your spirit is not. You are not. You are not alone. And we think we're fooling God. We're not. God knows you are not alone. He knows. You are there all alone physically or spiritually. Yeah. That's yeah. Legion. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Legion. Amen. Let's. So I'm thinking about money. So I'm thinking about husband. So I'm thinking about husband to be. So I'm thinking about wife. So I'm thinking about children. So I think about business. Oh, can I travel? You know, we are never alone. Mm. And therefore, there's no room for God. And when there's no room for God, our asking and our thinking will continue to be across purposes. Because it is God that brings that unity. So you must trace your steps back. Take some time. Get alone. You know one of the quickest ways to be alone is to go and fast. Your body will be too weak. Your yeah, body is very stubborn. Yeah. You will be so weak, you won't be able to do anything. You hear God by force. <laughs> when you have not eaten any food, they tell you, oh, this person is gossiping about you. You say, no. I'm not today. There's no energy to fight. Go and fast. Fasting doesn't profit heaven, it profits you. Some of us, we think that when we are fasting, that heaven is rejoicing for what? <laughs> it profits you. So it helps you go back to stay alone. So he was alone. He wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. And he said, bless him. He said, let me go for the dawn is breaking. So I won't let you go. What is your name? He replied, Jacob. He said, your name will no longer be Jacob. From now on, you will call Israel. So what happened to him from that time of being alone? He did what? He wrestled with God and he got his switch. His life just changed. What 
caused that change. In verse 30, he said, I have seen God face to face. That's the only thing that can change your life. What are you gazing at? Where are your eyes? And when I'm talking now, I'm not talking about your body. Remember your experience. When I say, where are your eyes? Where is your, where, what do you put your mind on? What are you gazing at? Whatever you gaze at is what you will be. Go back to Genesis 30. Let's go two chapters back. Jacob's wealth increases. That's the subheading. You know, Jacob was a, an apprentice when he went to labor. He started to work for him. Then he said to Laban, you know what, I want to go back. Laban asked him very honestly, how much should I pay you? Now, remember, before his name was changed to Israel, he was what? A supplanter, mm -hmm. a deceitful person. He was given to cheat him. Cheated his brother, just trying to transact with Jacob. Just do it for one night, shall, shall. Okay. I'm going to move on. Laban said to him, Jacob, how much should I say? He said, no, don't pay me. What kind of something is that? He said, don't pay me. Walk through your flock. Anyone that is spotted, anyone that is speckled, give them to me. You know why? Because you cannot sacrifice the spotted, the speckled, yeah. the broken. You can't give them as a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So he was saying to Laban, give me the rejects. Mm -hmm. Give them to me. Ah, if it's you, you'll not be happy. Hey, is that what you want? Don't want me to pay you. This how many years you sent me. Say, no, just give me. So he gives them to him. Says, anyone that is spotted, he said, give to me as my wages. In future, now this is the sub terms and conditions. Now you take bank loan. You'll then put some terms that you don't reach. Uh -huh. Say, in future, when you check on the animals you are giving me as my wages, you will see that I have been honest. Yes. Steal it. I have been honest. If you find in my flock any goats without speckles or spots or any sheep that are not black, you will know that I have stolen from you. So we have an agreement. Mm -hmm. Anyone that is speckled is mine. Anyone that is not speckled is yours. The man says, All right. Let it be as you say. That very day he went out, he removed the male goats that were stripped and spotted. He removed all the female goats that were speckled and spotted or had white patches. He removed all the black sheep. He placed them in the care of his own sons, who took them a three days journey from where Jacob was. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, where was Jacob? Read that last time. Yeah. Jacob stayed to care for the rest of the flock. So Laban had removed all. All. Do you understand? So there is no risk of um, reproduction that he had removed them, given them his sons, took them away. No contamination. But who is the generator of this genius idea? Jacob. Where was the Jacob? He was still there with Laban. Hmm. He didn't take them to go. So what did he start doing? Jacob took some fresh branches from poplar, almond, and plane trees and peeled off strips of back, making white streaks on them. Then he, then he placed these peeled branches in the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink, for that was where they mated. Hmm? And when they mated in front of the white streaked branches, they gave birth to young that were streaked, speckled and spotted. So as they were reproducing, he was doing what? Separating them. What was the agreement? The speckled ones, spotted ones, black ones, patched ones are mine. So what did he do? He created designs that were speckled. He created designs that were spotted, yes. that had patches, and put them in front of the sheep. What were the sheep seeing all day? Speckled. What did they give birth to? Speckled. What are you seeing all day? Mm. What do you spend your day gazing at? Hmm. What are you seeing all day? Some of you, you do, you are a spirit. We need to come back, you are a spirit. Big Bang Theory doesn't feed the spirit man. Big Brother Niger does not feed the spirit man. It will speckle you. Should you not watch TV, please, 
watch TV. But you see, when you sit down, you balance, then you read your food in front of you. Some of you, you can't even find where to put the spoon. Hey. Shay and the touch, what's the touch, touch hot or something? Hey. Oh, I did not like this girl before. You even forget yourself. Guess what? Speckling and spotting yourself daily. Some of you is not TV. It's Mills and Boo. And his brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. You know Mills and Boo called her to deliver me. Nobody could have been as bad. I've said this before. I used to do night vigil with Nozzle. <laughs> night vigil. I will start reading the novel then. It's better. I'm like, hey! The girl will so agree for the man. <laughs> if I sleep now, I will I will soon finish it. Nora Roberts, part one, yeah, part two, yeah, yeah. my very yeah. family. Yes. Oh, Daniel has married many sisters. Yes. <laughs> we do Vichy. We are speaking. We are spotting. You are transforming yourself into what? The way you finish, you get up and begin to quote the scripture. No weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. <laughs> and you're wondering why the weapons are prospering. You're thinking and you're ask, acting, asking. At all. What do we gaze on? What should we gaze on? Whatever you gaze at will transform you. For good or for evil. It will change you. Moses cried out to God. He said, God, let me see your face. God said, if you see my face, you can't leave me. I'm showing you my power. But when he passed by, did Moses go away? Go and read the scripture. Moses didn't go away. He didn't run back to say, hey, I saw the power of God. Hey, no. What did he do? He stayed there. He stayed there in the presence of God. When he came back, he had a definite word. Ten commandments. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Mm. He said, maybe, mm -mm, was very definite. Why? Because he had been in the presence of God. When he came out, what did the Israelites say? Cover your face. What is this? Why? Because what he had been looking at transformed him. Moses had to put a veil because they couldn't look at him. What are you gazing at? What are you looking at? Do an audit of your day. It's very simple to do. I said that I had to do one. So when I wake up, I pray, then I... In fact, my, my latest fetish is just to be tidying things up like a mad person. You think my house is going for house and garden? Get up at 2 a.m. and we make my bed. <laughs> Do you understand? Fold all my clothes, make sure the shirts are all white, blue. I can be there doing this thing for 10 hours. Yes, so all the rooms, room by room by room, and I'm exhausted. I'm not going to gaze at God. So, guess what has speckled me? Irritation. So when I enter into a place that is a bit scattered, I'm what? I'm irritated. It took me a, it took me a while to realize that this is what has happened because of what I've been gazing at. What are you gazing at? What takes up the majority of your time? If it's not God taking up the majority of your time, you cannot find that unity that will cause your thinking and your asking to become one. You cannot. Do an audit. Mm. So you know what I do now, like a mad person. The minute I get up, there's a message play. Whether I'm taking my bath, whether I'm dressing up, whether there's a message that is what? Mm. My, I've told my mind that whether you like it or not, you will be renewed. Yes. 
how does transformation come? The Bible says, be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. You know, when you give your life to Christ, you are saved from the penalty of sin. But your mind is not saved from the process of sin. It is by renewing the mind that you become saved. That's why the Bible says, even as a Christian, you should do what? Work out your salvation. That you came out and you answered an altar call doesn't mean that your salvation is sorted out. No. You are saved from the penalty of sin. The Bible says sin has no hold over you. But you work out that salvation. Why? Because your mind needs to subject itself to the Spirit of God. It must subject itself to the Spirit of God. And that's why they tell you that the battle is where? It's in your mind. If you overeat, it's in your mind. If you are dealing with lies, guess where it starts? If you are dealing with fornication and adultery, name it, stealing, cheating, lying, where does it start from? What renews the mind? Is that gazing? You are sitting down with your father. You are just gazing, gazing, gazing. You come today, you come tomorrow, you come the next day. You are just sitting down, you are gazing. Guess what? He's rubbing off on you. He's rubbing off on you. He's rubbing off on you. You come out all of a sudden, people are saying, ah, I know what happened to you. Yes, can you imagine what your life would be like when it is God who is speckling you mm. and spotting you? Mm. Can you imagine what your life will be like when you have become speckled and spotted by God? There's a Catholic priest, I'm trying to remember where he's from, I can't remember where he's from. But somebody was sharing a testimony that he was in the train. That's maybe in UK or wherever he's from. He was in the train. A woman who was a sworn atheist, she saw him in the train. She said, just the way you do, I will give my life to Christ. Wow. And he talked to her. He didn't preach to that. Wow. He had been gazing. Imagine what your life will be like when it is God. Who is speckling and spotting? How did Jacob become well? These were animals without spots, without speckles. But they were doing what? Reproduce. So you begin to reproduce. You are reproducing the character of God. You are reproducing the power of God. You are reproducing the mind of Christ. I've confessed it one million times. You have the mind of Christ. Confessing the mind of Christ, God says, God punish you. Punish your papa and your mama, idiots. That's not the mind of Christ. When God speaks you, you will produce and you will be easy. I want to be a pastor, a redeemed pastor. He's left our office now, and God has just, I mean, his trouble is over. The way God blessed me. In fact, it's now that I started to go through this series of Citizens of Heaven that I realized that He caught this revelation. Do not tell us, bro. <laughs> we went to do a presentation somewhere. Now, this guy, this guy had worked in the banking industry up to the point where he was DND of a big bank. So in Nigeria, it's an old guy. Yeah. Not a, uh, uh, so the fact that things have changed doesn't mean, you know, there are people who are GMs who are EDs in bands. When they see him, they greet him, shake him with two hands, and, you know, it's an organ. So we went to do a presentation somewhere. One small game. Small game. If they promoted her too much, she's an assistant manager. If they promoted her, accelerated, 
So I went to do that presentation. She just took the papers <coughs> physically and flung them at him. Mm. Oh. Me, my blood, eh? They put it on a pot. It's just simmering. simmering. It's just simmering. <laughs> it's just waiting for any small people. Don't do action. I was shocked. I was like, excuse me. She said, you people did not even add an invoice. Go and add an invoice. People are wasting my time. I said, please, we're sorry. See, I already looking like, ha, ha. I said, please, we're sorry. Don't be angry. That's what I said to him. I said, please, don't be angry. I don't care what you people do. Just get out of here. I said, it's OK. Don't be angry. I said, hey, let me just slap us. Give me. 
when you encounter his gaze, when you start dating, do you remember when they were toasting? How many times were people talking to you? All the time. <laughs> I like that all the time. Meanwhile, when it comes to God, we have time. Quiet time is six to seven. Six thirty. Six thirty seven. And you put timer. Yes, fine. And when the timer goes, ah, I've done my quiet time. Guess what? He happy gazed. He didn't went to heaven. He did not gaze. He didn't. He didn't wink. He will use one eye to look. When I was dating, there were no phones. So you know what we used to do? Write their thoughts. So now I'm learning to write my, my thoughts, my prayers, my communication with God. You know, see, the dream does that in love. Yeah. He's writing. I'm writing. And I'm saying, God, now I love you. I don't even know how to tell you how much I love you. There are no words. Love just seems very... Because I tell my children I love them, I tell my uncle I love you. I don't know how to express it to you. Oh boy, you know how you love me. Ah. And that's why I like pidgin English. There are some things that you can say to God in pidgin English that English does not translate. That's why you are gazing. You are not there because you want anything. And then because you just want to. You know how when you are toasting a girl, so you look into my eyes. Mm. Yeah. You are just there. You want the girl to see you every day. You want her to hear your voice. You want her to, you're just there. The two of you say, so, okay, drop the phone. No, you hang up. You hang up. No, you hang up. Less. 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 That's your heart cry. Right now, this season, that's the cry of the Father's heart. Now we'll come to Him, not looking for anything. Trust me, don't look for. Try it for one more dance. Now He didn't ask for anything. He just said, "You know what? Just go. Let's just don't time Him. Don't and don't walk. You know, we think we can walk God up, but when I see, where's my?" Uh, by eating louder.
Even you, after a while, you feel defiant. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't do anything bad, though. Mm -hmm. You just know that. So the next time you get there, come in. Do like Joseph. Flee. Leave your rapper. <laughs> Because as you're sitting down, gazing at them, guess what? You become like That's after a while they tell husband and wife, they look alike, they behave alike, they always... And that's why you must pray for your husband. Because you have married him already. And you must pray for your wife. You have married her already. And you must gaze. So that thing that you say you don't like inside her, you don't pray the way. It will step on you. Hmm. Well, now when you become like that, you mean, God, I don't shout too much. <laughs> Before you do it, then people will be telling you, you shout a lot. Because you are gazing. Then guess what will happen to your children? They will be shouting. Why? They are gazing. And that's why you must pray. Because you can't cut off the wife or the husband. So face that one with prayer. But you see, friends, don't even waste your time praying. It's too much work. You have many prayer points. Many friends that you are giving at that is begging you for bad. Don't bother praying. Oh God, change is my friend. Drop that friend. Find another friend. Or you play with your salvation. Your salvation, work out your salvation with God. Yeah. yeah, you know, and we're not afraid in this generation. You know, we don't even think heaven is real, mm. we don't think there is a fire. We don't, there's no fear of God because if we if we had the fear of God, nobody will tell you, like Joseph, you will leave your papa, you will run. Guys are young, you can change your you can change the route of your destiny now. You can decide today on changing it. All it takes is to retrace your steps. Go back. So what am I gazing at? You need to weed out some things. On the retreat, stay alone. Ask God, God, show me the things, the people that should go. Let them go. Righteousness and unrighteousness, they can't stay together. They cannot. They cannot. They cannot. Even tithing can never make an illegal deal legal. No, mm. it cannot. It cannot. But you see money, God will bless you with it. The minute I caught this revelation, the minute I caught it, I kid you not, the minute I caught it, the Lord showed me what to do in business. Showed me, this is what you need to do, this is what you need to do, do this, do this, do this, do that. I was writing it down. Hold a few friends. Let's set up this business. Huh? I thought, you know, it'd be like before you say, I'm setting up a business. Can I put you as director? They'll say yes. Now they are saying, I am going to put money. Do you understand? So the directors are not saying, oh, just put my name. They're saying, no, I'm going to put money. How many shares do you have? I want to take 20%. I want to take 30%. They're bringing money. This is the money we were confessing. Since. Did not come. Now I've gone back to my destiny, to what I was called to be. So every resource that I need, God will do what? And you see, when God provides the resources, He provides so much more than you need. We did a financial projection. We're looking at the numbers. I said to one of the directors, it's impossible that we can make this money in one year. We can make this money. She said, yes. And it's so simple. So, how come we never saw this? Why? Because I went back. He said, God, what am I here to do? Let me download it from heaven. God gave it to me from heaven. And that's why we're also careful to say, when the money comes, what are we going to use it for to do? It's not for new clothes. It's not for a new car. It's not for shoes. It's not for bags. It's not. You must retrace your steps. I think that captures the attention. If it's not God, you must break it today. Yeah. Yeah. Any 
any questions? Don't. Let us pray.